Hey everybody, welcome back to the lab. Today, we are going to be exploring pyrolytic graphite. So I got this bottle second hand, and the contents of it included these two pieces and the piece that is floating in here in the display right now. So if you see here, you can poke at it and it, it's flux pinned so it likes to stay in this area you can push it down but this is actually three pieces it came as one piece but the razors here for a reason I'm not going to slice this piece at the moment because this is the only large piece that I have and I'd like to use that in different experiments later. But if you take it, it you have about so point, point 0.75 millimeter here. So you, you can you can saw this in half. Um, and I actually got this one into two pieces and then a little bit more. You can see it scratched out. <laughs> A slightly different shade on this side and that's where the razor actually touched and the rest of this all split apart so it still has a speckly texture to it I wanted this to levitate higher so that's why I cut these so here we have a little bit better angle and you can see noticeably that this thing is floating off of the ground and you can push it down you can spin it around a little bit here. It it will it's it's a rectangular shape that I have on here right now, so it doesn't spin that well. Maybe if I try it with this one. You can get round discs of this, but I don't have any at the moment. Sometimes you get it to stand a little bit. So you push it all the way down, comes. Oh, how did I do that? No strings attached. So this whole dark area over here was after I cut these in half. I took them and was lapping them, try and get them a little bit smoother. I think I actually need sandpaper, it's tougher than that, but it does leave a marking, uh, same as pencil lead would. It's basically the same stuff, but much more organized. But I've seen videos that you can move these with lasers, so I'm going to try and give that a go. Nope, not with that one. Safety squints, engage. But no, this thing's like two watts. All right, let's see if we can get it to move. And testing. Oops. Take two, testing. Got it on it, and nope, can't get it to go, get it to wiggle around a whole bunch. I mean, if I take that off, it goes dead solid. I mean, I, I can move it around here, but I think we need a bigger piece of graphene on a smaller track of magnets. Alright, new test. Big one. Hey, it works. Works a little bit better that way. So this is interesting. Yeah, so it'll slide back and forth in this direction. I, I need more magnets. It, it'll slide that way and lock to a new position. And it's comfortable going this way because of its shape, but not this way. That's what I'm trying to say. 
And if I turn it this way, it's going to roll on this track if I had a larger set of magnets. And if I put it this way, it's going to be more comfortable rocking on this track. Just going that way. Core intact. Ow. Oh, we got motion. Very little though. This piece is barely floating. Try flipping it over. If we got this any better. Nope. Well, I cannot with my current magnet setup move this very far with the laser. But it is possible it does react to it. I think I learned something here today. That I gotta buy more magnets. Now, to my knowledge, I haven't actually looked, but I don't think I know anybody that has ran a Tesla coil, in this case a very tiny mini Tesla coil, um, into graphene to see if that alters anything. I'm not actually sure how this alters magnetic currents, but uh, let's plug it in and find out. Okay, let's hope this doesn't uh, scare the camera too much. Oh, I turned my computer on. Oh, it starts shaking. You see that? Oh no, that's when it gets hit by it. It arcs to it. Nothing exciting. So here we have a field of buckyballs, which are both smaller and also neodymium magnets. Um, but they, this is even one of the thin pieces, and they just don't exert the same magnetic field as if it was a square field. If, it, if this was a full square field of little tiny magnets like that, I feel like this would be working really well. But uh, so buckyballs don't work. So I snapped all the magnets together like this, and if you take this, it just sits on the side. It's not repelled from them in that direction. Whereas if I try and lean it up this way, it keeps getting pushed back towards my thumb. And you can actually tip it. And you can actually tip it against the side of it, but not actually against the side of it. Oh, there we go. That's a good one. Wow. Alright guys, I guess that's all we can do for today, so I put it back in there, and soon enough I'll probably end up with some more magnets, and we can see where things go from there. Anyway, if you want to see that in the future, please subscribe, and next time we'll be checking out some strange optics.